So, my mum and dad separated when I was in grade two. I was seven years old. Mum had packed the car without the knowledge of myself and my brother and we sat in the back of the EH Holden looking out the window at our dad as he stood at the top of the stairs between these massive human-sized cactus and the front door. I remember looking at my dad and the blank look on his face. He appeared sad but I couldn't quite tell because, well, there was just this blank look on his face. He didn't wave, he didn't dip his head, he didn't even seem to blink. He just stood there, almost like he wasn't breathing. I remember staring at my dad, but I don't think he saw me. He was facing in our direction, he was looking at the car, but I don't think he saw me looking up at him. Mum started the car and I turned my whole body to face her. I loved that car so much, I thought it was the coolest. It was like this dusty pink colour. I wondered why it wasn't shiny like the other cars, and one day when I finally asked her about it, she said it was because it was matte. I had no idea what that meant, and I knew if I asked any more questions, I still wouldn't get it, so I just left it at that. Every time I'd get in the car, I'd brush the side of it like I was stroking a cat. It felt powdery, and I really liked the texture and feel of it. We also liked running in front. This car had a bench seat, which meant I could sit right next to my mum as she drove. It didn't have a gear stick or console between us. Mum would always have these pillows she'd have behind her back and I remember asking her why she had these pillows there and she said it was because she was too short to reach the pedals. I remember looking down at her feet and I still didn't get what she meant. I mean I know now that it's because these seats couldn't be moved closer to the pedals so she had to use pillows to push herself closer but as a kid I didn't get the logic. As we sat in the car everything was just so calm. My brother and I didn't really know what was going on, nothing had really been explained to us. But mum wasn't upset or angry. She wasn't crying. I mean, she wasn't upbeat or talkative, but there was no indication to us that anything was wrong. The weirdest thing was probably that the radio wasn't on. We'd normally get in the car and immediately come up with rules if I spy or start singing nonsense, but there was none of that. Mum would often randomly sing her conversations. Oh, she still does it. We all do now. Like she'll get halfway through a sentence and it'll remind her of a song and she'll just go with it and not remember anything that she was going to say and then we'd all chime in and start singing too. But there, sitting in that car, we were just all quiet. It was weird, but at the same time it wasn't uncomfortable. And we had no idea why there was a packed trailer on the back of the car, but it still didn't feel like anything was wrong. As the car took off from the curve, I looked back at my dad who was still standing there like this blank statue and then we rounded the corner and he was gone. My brother asked where we were going and mum said we were off to our new home and that we'd only be there in a minute and she was right. Even though my brother was only five at the time, he could tell that we'd only passed a couple of beaches before turning into the street that would be our new home. Mum parked the car on the road because there was no driveway to the house, but there was this cute little path that was outlined with sandstones that led right up to the back door. I pushed past Mum and ran up to the back door because I was so excited to see our new house, knowing full well that I'd have to wait at the door for her anyway. And when Mum unlocked the door, I just burst straight through. The house was awesome. It was small, like it was actually just the back part of a bigger house where another tenant lived in the front, but this place was perfect. A toilet was located outside in a tiny shed that always had spiders in it and I remember feeling scared to go to the toilet sometimes because of that and how cold it could be to go to the toilet at night sometimes. But I also thought it was kind of cool. Like, who else has a toilet outside? No one. Even though it was just a toilet, it just, I don't know, it just felt kind of cool to have something different to everyone else I knew. Well, everyone I knew was seven. And the whole house was already set up. All the furniture, our clothes had been put away, curtains hung, kitchen set up, even the toy room was ready for us to play. Mum had planned this move for some time and we had no idea. She'd done this all in secret. I think back to how stressful that must have been for her and how she would have had to save her money and get the courage to leave my dad and how she did it in a way where my brother and I were totally unaffected. And I really admire her for that. This was not a breakup that was traumatic for us kids. Perhaps it was for them, but if that was the case, neither of them led on to us kids and I think that's really important that they both agreed to not involve us kids in their mess, whatever that was. My brother went to check out the bathroom, which was inside towards the back of the house, and he screamed when he saw a bath full of cockroaches. Some of them were dead, but most were running around in a panic from having the light turned on, and he yells out, Dad will kill them. Mum then took my brother by the hand and called me out to dinner as it was ready, and we had cheese toasties that night. Mum sat us down to explain that although we would still see our dad, and we already knew that we weren't living far from him, 
that he would no longer be living with us. And I was okay with that. I remember feeling a little bit sad, remembering back to Dad's face when we drove away because then I knew why he looked like that. But I actually felt okay about it. I loved my mum so much. She was my hero, like she still is. This move was so unexpected, but my mum always made me feel safe. As long as I was with my mum, I trusted that everything was going to be okay. It was time for bed, so mum put me to bed and turned on a nightlight and pressed play on my cassette player. I didn't need a nightlight, but this was a new home and mum's room was on the other side of the house, so she thought it would be a comfort to me. I was really into this band. I'm not really sure you can call it a band, but it was called Captain Beaky and his band. And my favourite songs were one about an owl named Blanche that was, um, she was nervous to fly. And there was a song about a dog whose best friend was his human owner. And these songs were more like poetry set to music and I absolutely loved it. I still have this cassette actually, but the only place I can play it is in my car at the moment and I'm too worried the old car stereo will chew it up. My mum then put me to bed. The lounge room was divided in the middle by a hallway where the larger side was used as the lounge room and the smaller side was set up as my brother's room. And as I lay in my bed trying to sleep, I started to think about my old home. I loved my dad too, but I knew my parents fought a lot. The yelling would start and I never knew why or how it started and never really heard what was said. All I knew that it meant was that it was time to go to our room. Sometimes my brother and I were told to go to our room and sometimes we just knew so we'd go on our own accord. We would often both go to my brother's room and that's where we'd listen to music together, we'd play together, colour in and listen to mum and dad fight. The bedroom door slid on track so if there was ever anyone was to ever slam a door it would either slide back open or fall to the ground. These doors were not made to keep out sound and as my brother would play we would hear plates being smashed and drawers full of cutlery being thrown about the kitchen and down the hall. I thought about that for a while then I closed my eyes. Blanche started playing and the soothing deep voice of Captain Beaky's poetry sent me off to sleep. Hey, so thank you for watching. Um, I hope you like my piece. Um, like I've said, it was inspired by my dad standing next to that huge cactus, which kind of reminds me of the one in The Simpsons that Marge hides behind. So I don't know, it's kind of a bit of a comical memory for me. And I do know that I spoke about how it's also a memory of my parents splitting, but like I also said, that wasn't something they made a sad memory for us kids. Um, and I really like how the gold leaf and the black have added some depth with all that chaotic greens and earthy tones behind with the bricks sort of representing, you know, the cactus and the house that we left and the new house that we ended up in. Um, my dad passed in 2018 and like I said, even though the memory of my parents splitting probably wasn't the fondest, um, it's, I don't know, it's just it's a nice visual that I have my father when I close my eyes and think of him. So I don't know, if you like my artwork, if you want to just pop a comment down below, that'd be really cool. And even if you absolutely hate it, um, if you want to say that and then tell me why you hate it, because it doesn't matter how many years you've been an artist for or that you've been painting for, I think that constructive criticism is always good because we're always trying to learn, always trying to get better. And speaking of getting better, my, <laughs> my filming and editing process was... It, yeah, it was it was bad. bad. I bet, oh, that's something that I'm trying to get better as well. That's, that's something that I'm not familiar with, and um, yeah, it's a learning process as well. But um, yeah, thank you, thank you for watching.